Yes, Telio, dear champs, and you've seen CES, you've seen all these new laptops, AMD, new Intel, new NVIDIA 3000 series, but now it's time for the destroyer to come in and to exterminate all laptops before it, or will it? Well, let's discuss. So in this video, we're going to talk about the new Macs coming out, the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 specifically. And we're also going to talk about how they compare to the PCs that come out at CES with the latest, you know, AMD, latest NVIDIA, latest Intel. Well, not really Intel, but yeah, the latest stuff coming out because you may be like me. And what I mean by that is I'm going to buy one laptop this year. I don't even know what it's going to be yet. Will it be XPS, Content Creation Machine? Will it be MacBook Pro? Or will it be one of these new beastie gaming AMD 5000 series laptops that are, you know, good for content creation as well with the latest NVIDIA GPUs? There's some good points to discuss in regards to this. And let me know down there in the comments which way you're thinking of going. Let's make it nice and interactive. Hey, don't hate on each other. People get what they want, whatever. That's their choice, right? But let's have some, you know, discussion there, robust discussion. But let's talk about these new Macs. And oh my God, are these going to be the destroyers, these laptops? Well, I think in the content creation world, maybe. Battery life is going to be insane. The performance, the performance per watt is going to be insane. If you're more of a gamer... We'll discuss that later. But Mark Gurman has tweeted out. A lot of these Mac rumors, they're just speculation. They're mostly a fist of fury stuff. But when Mark Gurman tweets out, he's not always first. In fact, sometimes he tweets out five minutes before an Apple event. And yeah, he's 100% right. But he never tweets out stuff before he checks everything. And he knows it's pretty much nailed on 100% true. So this stuff, I believe. So we're going to have a 14-inch MacBook Pro and a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Slight redesign, okay? So I don't have to show you these fancy renders. They're going to look like the current versions we have now. The MacBook Pro 14 will look like the 13, just slightly bigger, you know. Think about the difference between the MacBook Pro 16 and 15. There wasn't that much difference, right? That's going to be the same thing. The MacBook Pro 13, MacBook Pro 14, middle of the year they're coming out. So for me, that means WWDC. Now there is other stuff like there's new Mac Pros, there's new Intel Mac Pros, there's Apple Silicon Mac Pros, there's new iMacs, that's for another video. I just want to concentrate on the MacBook Pro 16 and 14. So Mark Gurman tweeted out, I'll read this verbatim. For the new high-end 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, Apple indeed returns MagSafe. I don't know how that's going to be implemented. Are they going to put like magnets on the USB-C and it can snap apart? Or will they go like the iPhone? They have a certain area where you can just chuck a MagSafe charger on it. I don't know. I'm dying to find out. But also, the end of the touch bar. Oh, yes, baby. Now, my girlfriend, I'll tell you now, she loves the touch bar. There are people that love the touch bar. I don't even use it. Good riddance. I don't care. It's good that they actually killed it and they realized that people want a touch screen, not a touch bar. Now, the next thing is very important to me, brighter screens. Now, will these be mini LED? Mark Gurman never mentioned mini LED. Other people have sort of guessed it may be mini LED. But personally for me, until I see mini LED in a high quality display, it doesn't exist, right? I mean, we've seen it on MSI laptops. It wasn't that good. So whether mini LED is good enough for Apple, whether it meets their standards or not, we'll have to wait and see. But new brighter displays to me means Dolby Vision displays. They're going to be Dolby Vision. Brighter maybe just brighter peak brightness. Maybe they're 600 nits and 800 nits peak brightness or 1000 nits peak brightness. Who knows? But I expect it to be Dolby Vision and I expect it to be HDR. And this is what we need so much on these laptops because I have to go to my LG TV when I do HDR content. Because to be honest, the Macs are the only one that really map out that HDR properly, especially in Final Cut, looks good on even an SD screen but this is going to be a big deal now we can edit you know HDR content Dolby Vision content on your Mac so MacBook Pro 16 and 14 now they said more ports so I expect four Thunderbolt 3 or 4s whatever they're calling them hopefully they work properly hopefully they don't have some of the issues you know backport into USB 2 and we're getting full speed SSD speeds and hopefully they sort out the Bluetooth issues with you know M1s now there's one other thing Mark said, next generation M series Apple Silicon. This one, I'm not sure about. This may be down to interpretation. What I mean by that is, do they call the M1X next generation? Because to me that's not. If it's based on the A14 or it's based on an M1 and it's the M1X and it's just got more cores etc. 
That's not next generation for me. That is just, you know, a higher end model of what we already have. To me, next generation means M2. So that would mean it's not based on the A14, which the M1 is. It's based on the A15. So the CPU that's going to come on the next, you know, iPhone. If it's mid-year, does that mean like an M2 A15 based variant is coming out before the iPhone gets it? Of course, the iPhone 1 is different, but, but you know, based on the A15... Can't wait to see anyway. Expect more performance cores and more GPU cores. That's the thing. And whether they crank up the TDP or not, hopefully they do. The battery life should be insane unless they go to a higher resolution display, which they may do or they may not do. I can't wait to find out if they're going to 5K displays now because they've got so much battery life in like a 16 and 14 inch with, you know, the M1s or M1X or M2s. They can put a higher res display, but will they do that? Maybe Apple think that it's a waste of time having a 4 or 5K display on a laptop. But there's one thing. When it comes to, say, the MacBook Pro 16, Apple would be paying billing materials about $1,000 if you've got the high-end one just for the AMD GPU and the Intel CPU. They don't pay that anymore. The bill of materials for the M1 or M2, it's peanuts. It's probably less than $100 to them. If they pull all the R&D of any of the Apple Silicon all into one pool, it's going to cost them nothing. Would I go to 4 nanometer? Would I go to 3 nanometer? We know that Apple are going to buy TSMC's 3 nanometer as soon as it's out. Now let's talk about these Macs versus the PC. So the way I see it, if you're content creation, oh, it's going to be hard to beat these Macs, all right? If you're 100% content creation, it's going to really be hard. I don't think PCs will have anything that performs the same as these, just because Apple will build in everything into those M1 or M2 chips, all right? So they're going to have all this hardware acceleration. My 6K content, HEVC, ProRes, an 8 gigabyte MacBook Air just runs through that as good as like a high-end Intel and NVIDIA or AMD graphics card laptop. It does reach its limitations, you know, when you start stacking stuff and putting titles and stuff like that i expect all those limitations to be gone when we're talking about the 16 inch and the 14 inch new macbook pro with more cores more ram more gpu cores as well i think it's just going to be a no-brainer and i think it's actually going to be cheaper than the pc competition when it comes to content creation general purpose laptop you're not going to beat these things now if you're a gamer or you're maybe 50 percent gamer 50 percent video editor or content creator or something like that then you might start thinking about these new pc laptops whether it be gaming or the next xps or whatever or any creator laptop that has the latest amd cpus the latest nvidia gpus if you're gonna game yeah get the gaming systems the pcs but if that m1 scales i expect it to be even the amd 5000 series cpus using less power as well even in multi-core i mean it's pretty close to the old 4000 series and it's only got four performance cores. Imagine it's got eight performance cores. It's just going to leapfrog AMD and Intel in CPU. GPU, NVIDIA is always going to probably be faster, even if they added double the amount of GPU cores on this Apple Silicon. Still, those NVIDIA GPUs are just nuts. It'll be hard to beat them in that regard. So anyway, let me know down there in the comments, what are you excited for? Can't wait to see these things. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.